how would the empowered version of you approach this situation? That feels like the cosmic divine invitation that's being echoed throughout individual and collective consciousness right now. It's been a while since I've done an energy update, but there's some really loud themes that I'm feeling and hearing, seeing, observing that I want to reflect back to you through my own lens for you to chew on, digest, assimilate, consider for your own personal experience because we are in a time of great revolution, great refinement, great change, great evolution, whether we're conscious of that or not. And there are invitations in the change, in the volatility, in the transformation that's occurring on planet Earth right now. Great invitations, great opportunities, but they do require our discernment, they require our awareness, they are actually requiring us to step up, to step in to a vibratory state, an embodiment of our true self. From the I am, from the aspect of our consciousness, the seed of God within us all, that knows truth, that operates from clarity, that operates from knowingness, that operates as the creator and not the victim of the conditional reality. There's lots to dive into today. I'll be as concise as I can be, but I'm really looking forward to touching on what I feel are about four key themes right now. That is doors closing and the opportunities that are arising as those doors close. This invitation to not let our material reality have dominion over our consciousness. Ancestral healing, particularly around the mother wound and our relationship to our roots and soul sovereignty. There is a huge energetic invitation to stop outsourcing our power to saviour figures, to figureheads, to even godheads that we perceive to be outside of ourselves. We've done this, we've walked this path. This is a moment in our evolutionary process of spiritual maturation and it's really important that we don't get sucked into karmic pathways and timelines and actually really heed the potential opportunities of this moment to really evolve, really spiritually mature, to really come back into our organic state as co-creators of this reality. So let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Temple of Akasha, the home of embodied spirituality with me, Natasha. So as I mentioned in the intro, lots to dive into today, particularly around the theme of empowerment. Now, this is the theme through which I tend to view a lot of the energetic unfoldings, the conditions on earth right now, because this has been my personal pathway of moving from very disempowered, helpless, hopeless states to states of empowerment and being really embodied in a knowingness of who I am and what I'm capable of, what we're all capable of. And that's really what um, drives my mission and my work. That's the, the lens I view our evolutionary process through. That's just one lens of perception. I'm offering it to you as a reflection. So just take the best and leave the rest. I got that from my fiance and I quite like it. I think I'm going to use that more in videos. All right, so let's start with what's very astrologically and cosmically loud right now, which is the fact that we've got, I think, three planets at their anoretic degree, which is 29 degrees of that sign. I'm not going to go into the astrological aspects in depth because I don't know them in depth and I'm not an astrologer, but I have an awareness in my periphery that we are in a lot of completion and closure energy astrologically. I believe Capricorn and Pisces at least are at 29 degrees and I feel that innately within my own being. I'm experiencing it for myself directly and the way that I'm experiencing it is as though doors are closing. Now if we were just viewing these doors closing in our reality through the lens of the victim, through the lens of the one that life is happening to, this could feel in it like an incredibly disempowering time. It could really make us feel very helpless, powerless, frustrated, overwhelmed. There's a lot of soda plexus energy in all of this, what I'm speaking about. It can really bring up this sense of kind of despair, like whatever I do doesn't work. Whatever I'm trying, I'm, I'm being met with obstacles, I'm being met with challenges. And if we're just looking through that vibratory vantage point, this time is probably going to feel incredibly challenging. 
and it's going to feel as though we're being met with restrictions and limitations that feel unfair. So I'm going to invite you to raise your vibratory vantage point beyond the part of you that believes life is happening to it and instead just play with the notion of sitting in the I am presence, in the aspect of you that is observing this unfolding experience with neutrality, not labeling your experience or the experience on earth as good or bad, but is just noticing the wider remit of opportunity that is available, the wider remit of activity that's unfolding, and recognizing that even if it doesn't feel close to conscious awareness, this aspect of you, this aspect of you that is clear, clarified, directly connected to the source, knows that these doors that are closing are closing because you are being invited to move in a different direction. You are being invited to be dynamic, to be pioneering, to move differently, be differently, embody differently, vibrate differently. There are always opportunities when we seem to be reaching or coming up against limitations or barriers. And it feels right now as though the barriers or limitations we're perceiving may feel harsher or they may feel more confronting right now, and that's simply because the evolutionary process is accelerating. Our experience of our humanity, of time, of space, it's changing, and I'm sure you've noticed that to some degree in your own personal experience. This evolutionary process of simultaneous ascension and descension, it's accelerating. This epoch, this time of great change, this apex in evolutionary history is really bringing together the disillusion and the collapsing of a lot of false infrastructure, both in our reality physically and in our consciousness. And so this is starting to accelerate this process, the ways in which um, these structures, these um, systems, these ideas and ideologies, these stories, they're collapsing or they're being very challenged right now because they don't serve evolution. And so if you are experiencing the arising of limitations or restrictions or you're feeling particularly frustrated or powerless, I invite you to recognize that if things do not seem to be going according to your plan, perhaps the plan of the mind, the plan of your own egoic agenda, I invite you to consider that perhaps the things that you thought were important to focus on or to pursue aren't actually deeply serving an integrated awakening and evolutionary process. Ultimately, this is a really big push and shove towards us embodying our greatness, our potential, our dharma, and it, it feels as though this is kind of a direct shove in that direction. So you could use the analogy of going on a long journey. When we incarnate into these bodies, these earthly bodies, the soul has mapped a journey that it wants to take, learning, karma that it may want to rectify, challenges it wants to overcome and learn through and grow through, um, and ultimately experiences that are going to lead to more self-realization. And so you could imagine that the most direct route from A to B is, is a straight line, and that if we were really close closely listening and following the guidance of our, of our knowing, then that would be a fairly straightforward journey. But there are layers of interference between the clarity of who we truly are and our incarnated experience. These layers include the mental body and the emotional body where most people are vibrating and they are stuck and stagnant in those realms of consciousness where they're seeing and experiencing their lives through the realm of their mental awareness or through their emotional awareness, so being very governed by thought forms or indeed emotional reactivity. And those vibratory dimensions of our being are very, very susceptible to conditioning. And we're living on a planet that has been bombarded with a great deal of fear-based conditioning, which has kept us even more stuck and stagnant and taking these really drastic detours away from our dharma. And so we've got this journey that the soul wants to take from A to B, having certain experiences, moving more closely to a dharmic mission and purpose. And then we have 
the ways in which we've deviated from that path, we've denied our knowing, we've denied truth, we've denied love, we've denied God in favour of fear, in favour of conditioning. The more we do that throughout our experience, the more we deviate from the dharmic path and the more we start winding into these karmic cul-de-sacs and these different deviations. And so you could say that at this point in the evolutionary process, the further you've deviated from the dharmic path, is going to be relative to how big a shove you're going to need to get back on the dharmic path. So if you found yourself really preoccupied with a lot of um, your own egoic ideas about how you're here to live, really in denial of the truth of what's being asked to be recognised in your own personal experience, in your reality, you're going to probably find that the challenge to your idea of life is quite great right now. It's going to feel quite loud. It feels like everything I'm doing is being, you know, knocked back. It feels like it's being dismantled. It feels like it's being demolished and destroyed. And it's in these moments that we have to get really honest with ourselves. How much of the way that I'm living Am I living because I'm choosing to live this life? Because this life feels empowering to me, because it feels fulfilling to me, because it feels deeply satiating to my soul? And how much of the choices am I making because I think I should make these choices? Because I've seen others make these choices and I'm following suit. How much am I making these choices from a place of fear of making other choices and not knowing the outcome? These are the questions to be asking right now. I'm going to give you a brief example from my own experience. Yesterday, I wanted to send out an email campaign to my email subscribers to share a personal share, but also to let them know that my group mentoring program, which I'm launching in August, has 10% off and it was ending at midnight. And I found that as I was going on to the platforms that I normally send my email marketing from, I was being met with these restrictions and limitations on both of my accounts. So basically, I couldn't send emails to my subscribers from anywhere. Now, for perhaps six months or more, I've had this burgeoning gnosis within me that my soul is not satisfied with the way that I'm working, with the, the things I'm doing for work, with how I'm working, with the infrastructure of my, my, my business and how I'm serving people, and that there is a real desire for expansion. If I'm being really honest with myself, there has been this burgeoning awareness that I want to move away from online work and one-to-one -one work and actually move into having more impact, reaching more people, empowering more people, and ultimately getting to be face-to-face -face with more people people because that's the format of work that I most enjoy and I think is most needed on the planet. I feel very deeply in my being, in my bones, that we are longing to be in loving, conscious connection with one another on the ground, beyond these screens, beyond these social networks that are almost like a false web of connection and intimacy, and to really start recreating and re-establishing the tribes, rooted and anchored and I'm seeing in the work I'm doing how people are really longing to be seen, heard, held in connection and community in ways that are almost completely absent in the West. And so I've been hearing this call that it's time to make changes, uh, it's time to do things differently, it's time to expand, it's time to set up more infrastructure in my business because I've done everything I've done so far by myself and I would admit in a very haphazard way, you know, I'm just cobbling together uh, websites and, and all these different platforms and I'm doing my best to try and create something coherent, but it hasn't been in the most streamlined way I could. And I've been feeling this drive to start becoming more coherent in the way that I work so that I've got the infrastructure ultimately to scale what I'm doing, to work in a more efficient way. I am a human design projector, so efficiency, energetic streamlining is important to me. And really being able to do what I'm here to do dharmically in a way that is truly impactful, you know, and making sure that I'm expanding in the ways in which the soul desires to expand. Well, 
I found this quite scary. I found the up-leveling required in the systems in my business and the infrastructure quite overwhelming. I found the amount of change and work that's needed, even in the approach to how I work, to be quite formidable. Even though it's very deeply rooted in my heart, it's been really hard for me to claim that vision and to own it, to own the desire to have more impact, to be in the room with more people, uh, to support more people so that we have more conscious leaders, more conscious healers on the planet who can then go and share their medicine. And so I've been putting off changing the systems and the infrastructure in my business. I also have this kind of desire to create courses that are accessibly priced online so that uh, I can reach more people without necessarily having to exchange my time for providing that value because I'm a projector. I don't have a, an abundance of energy all the time. I have to be really smart with the way that I work in order for my work to be sustainable. And so I've been hearing and feeling this call to make changes and I've been eyeing up a certain platform that I know will really help um, support these changes and create more infrastructure. It would mean me spending more money and it would mean me really having to change and, and do a lot of work at the back end of my business to, to essentially prepare uh, for the scaling and for the, for the size of the growth that I want to call in. And I've been ignoring this. I've been putting it off and then yesterday it was like doors closing. You have to make this change now. The current platforms you're working with, you know, the current levels you're working at within those platforms, it's not enough. You have to make these changes. I also have this burgeoning awareness that even though financially it's not viable for me to hire someone, especially on a you know part-time or full-time basis, there is this knowingness that I need support, that eventually I'm going to need a team to help me manage um, my my work and my business effectively so that I can really focus on the delivery because that's what I'm really good at. That's what I'm really passionate about. And so there's almost been this kind of dual awareness present for me. There was a part of me yesterday that was really throwing a tantrum that was annoyed by doors closing, being met with limitations, this part that was, you know, woe is me, I'm trying my best, nothing is ever good enough. I just observed that part, I let the emotion move, you know, I let that part be held with my, my loving awareness. I recognised that it was quite childlike in the response that I was experiencing and witnessing internally, but I was also rooted in a much more neutral and um, observant place within my being that was aware that these changes are absolutely fundamental to me being able to grow my business in the way that I desire and to actually have the impact that I wish to have. So although that this change I'm being invited to make at this point might feel frustrating, it might feel taxing, it might feel overwhelming, it's actually a push to say, are you ready to step into the version that already exists vibrationally of your being that is holding that reality, that is holding that level of impact, that is holding a business that is scalable and is able to reach more people, to help transform more lives, empower more people to rise in their dharma and their destiny, because that's what we need. Lots of empowered, awakened people on the planet right now, really sharing their light, really sharing their medicine. And so the invitation is, can you embody that vibration now? Can you recognize that that energetic invitation, that energetic pathway, that that timeline is available to you now, that if you lean into the truth of what you want and you see the vision, your only real role is to claim it vibrationally. But we put up all of this resistance to the vision and the desires that we have through fear, you know, through judgment, we project all these stories onto this, this burgeoning desire and vision within us, when actually it's a seed that was planted by God, our unique path to play in this unfolding tapestry and web of life. Instead of creating resistance and living loyal to that resistance, can we live loyal to the vision and surrender to the unfolding of what we're being asked to embody and vibrate as? I feel the Saturn energy in this. I know that Capricorn is one of the signs at 29 degrees at its anoretic degree, and Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the taskmaster. It also rules karma, and it's uh, an archetypal energy that really invites us to step up, to take stock, to get honest about what we're doing, the way we're doing things, and is, is tough love. You know, it's like, okay, this is, this is what you've been doing, 
and you're going to continue to do it this way? Mm -mm. No, no, that, that's, not, that's not what you came in to do. You didn't come in to do it that way. That's fear, that's judgment, that's scarcity. You came in to shift the architecture, the energetic architecture on this planet. I'm gonna give you a shove so that you step into the version of you that's ready to support that process. So I feel the energy of Saturn in this experience. I feel uh, the limitations that Saturn can bring in order to make us grow and also, also make us masterful because Saturn rules mastery. So there is an aspect of this process that is really asking us to get refined with our awareness, to stop being leaky oh I'll, I'll do it next week even though I know it needs to be done now uh, you know it's like no enough is enough can we stop being complacent can we stop stagnating in you know comfortability and can we recognize that spiritually right now we're being asked to mature and to really take our rightful place in this world as empowered and awakened beings and to play our role to play the role we came here to play as bridges between the old world and the new world, between the old way and the new way, to support this planetary body and her inhabitants to move into a different vibrational state entirely. It's a big undertaking and it needs as many of us on board and vibrating in loyalty to that mission and that purpose over us, you know, having loyalty to the conditioning that we have been bombarded with and inherited. And that leads me on to the next part of the update, which is really just coming back to this knowingness of who we are, recognizing that we are not the thoughts that we often identify with, that we are not the emotions we often identify with, we are the loving awareness that holds the space for those things to unfold, for that energy to be moved dynamically and expressed dynamically. And our truest state and nature is boundless, is not actually affected or influenced by this conditional reality at all, and actually has great influence over our conditional reality. And so, as I said in the beginning of this video, there's an opportunity right now to not allow the density and the kind of compelling um, material quality of this reality to have dominion, to have governance over our I am, the knowingness of who we truly are, to recognize that we are creators, that we carry the spark and seed of God within us, that we have come to refine ourselves so that we can serve that seed of creation, that seed of mastery, and so that we can bring that forth into the world because the world benefits when every single being is vibrating from their I am presence, from the knowingness of who they truly are. Imagine a world where no one has been infected with the vibration of fear, with fear-based conditioning, with scarcity, and everyone is connected to their spiritual divine nature. That's a world I want to live in. That's a world that I support building, one where every individual has the right to claim that, to have the awareness that that's possible for them, that it's not an exclusive thing, that each one of us carries that spark and seed within us. And so when we're viewing our human experience from that vantage point, from the vantage of the creator, and not just the creation, not just the byproduct of life, but actually as the consciousness that really has the, the, the power to affect matter, to influence vibration. And although it's more subtle, that aspect understands that the physical reality is the last manifestation of creation. And so there is a real drive towards recognizing the choices we're making in terms of where we put our awareness. Do we choose to vibrate only at the level of the mental, emotional, or physical body? Or do we choose to ascend beyond just these very compelling states that we often find ourselves in and to really sit in a pure presence, to sit in the, the part of our being that knows beyond mental knowing? And it's really an invitation to recognize that we have a choice. We get to choose how we respond to what's unfolding. That is within our dominion. We have governance over that. That is where our empowerment lies. Choosing how to respond. Is the response, the karmic response, the fear-based response, is that empowering? Does that see opportunity? Does that see 
an invitation for growth, learning, change that's going to serve love, that's going to truly serve transformation? Probably not. When we choose to observe our conditions as an invitation for betterment, for change, for the transformation and honoring of truth, which is necessary and essential to our evolutionary process, then we start moving into states of empowerment. Ah, I see. I see that this is unfolding because there's been a deviation from truth and I'm being given the karmic opportunity to rectify that, come back to the singularity of love, come back to the singularity of truth. And so as I say often in my videos, I always invite you to ask within your own being, what is the truth? What is the truth that I've been denying, deviating from, avoiding, numbing out, distracting myself from? Can you sit in presence with your heart can you sit in presence with your being? Can you ask, what is the truth beyond all of the noise, beyond all of the layers, beyond all of the, you know, compelling, dizzying, fleeting things in our form world? Can you just draw your awareness into the spaciousness, into the silence and listen? What is the truth? What is the truth that I'm being asked to claim, to embody, to vibrate? What is the truth that I'm being asked to acknowledge in order to let go, in order to surrender, in order to accept? What is the truth that is going to allow me to be embodied in my power and my sovereignty as a being? What choices do I need to make to be embodied in that consciousness? And that leads me on to my third point, that many of us have been born into lineages, that we have chosen to incarnate into lineages, into maternal and paternal family lines, carrying tremendous amounts of conditioning from traumatic experiences, traumatic conditions, fear-based perceptions. And we have incarnated into these lineages to rectify the karmic imbalances, to clean the karmic slate, so that we have an opportunity to not just be carrying our karmic debt with us and dragging it along, but to truly be free beings. So let me just go into this in, in a little bit more depth. There's a huge, huge push towards ancestral healing and clearing right now. What I'm observing is that many people who have been on an awakening journey for a while now have moved beyond the kind of rectification and healing of their own karmic debts or imbalances and are actually now beginning to move through the layers, the multidimensional layers of conditioning and karma that exist within the family lines they've been born into, which ultimately, if you think of the ancestors as the root system, those lines feed into collective consciousness in a very big way. And so we are now moving beyond just the individual experience and what we've what we need to heal and rectify within our own being, but we're actually starting to move through and alchemize big, big themes that have been carried and perpetuated through generations that don't serve the evolution of consciousness. So a big one in my family line is poverty. And I think that this is a huge one on earth in general for many family lines. And it's one of the reasons why many spiritually inclined people are born into families where there are money issues, where there's instability in the material reality, when there's a lot of financial hardship, when there's genuine poverty. And that is because we have the awareness and the opportunity at this point on earth to understand what poverty truly is, the consciousness that underpins poverty, and to both honour the trauma of poverty, famine, you know, a lack of resources, malnourishment, to honour the fact that our ancestors did live through and have lived through tremendous hardship on this planet. And so we are simultaneously being asked to feel the pain of that hardship, and that's certainly what I've been in contact with recently. I can feel the pain of the ancestors that were involved in slavery, that were brought up in conditions where it was unknown whether or not you'd be able to feed yourself or your children. You know, in really tough conditions, as many lineages have experienced on the planet and are still experiencing on the planet, it's to both honour that hardship and that trauma, to move the associated stagnant energy of those experiences, and then to not let that conditioning and those past experiences govern and have dominion over our current 
incarnation and state of awareness. It's a very big ask. Ancestral healing can be incredibly challenging. It can be really difficult to shift the patterns and um, the conditioned thought forms, belief systems and assumptions when they're rooted in very deep ancestral stories because they're often compounded with a lot of direct experience that validates those stories, i.e. if you've grown up in a family line where there has been famine, poverty for generations, it's no wonder that we carry a memory genetically of poverty, of famine, of the hardship of that, of the, the stress of that, you know, that there is a real fear of that. And there is also perhaps the assumption that that's all that's possible for us. And so we go on emulating it and perpetuating it. So the ancestral clearing is hard because those stories and those beliefs are compounded over generations and they're often um, verified by conditions that said, yes, this is true. You know, this family will never have enough. This family line will always struggle. This family line is always going to be involved in hardship, etc. Whatever the ancestral stories are, and so there can feel like a tremendous amount of um, weight and clout behind the um, ancestral conditioning that we're being asked to face right now. But as I said in the previous point, this is the moment of rectification on earth where we're being asked to hold the awareness that we are not the experiences of our ancestors, that we are not the pain and the stress that we both carry and that we've inherited from them, that we are not bound by that conditioning. While we honor what has gone before, we don't need to be limited by it. We have the unique opportunity at this point on earth to supersede fear-based ways and to actually embody a state of consciousness that is connected to our true spiritual nature and to really approach our lives from an integrated space, to be able to integrate the material and the spiritual, to really be able to integrate both a wisdom and a knowingness that our ancestors carried and to really enter a space where we say this way of being, this way of vibrating, it ends with me because it doesn't serve anyone. And I'm not suggesting we blame anyone for the conditions that they experienced or the things that have been perpetuated. We are simply being invited to stand in an empowered space that says, I'm choosing to because I now have the conditions in place that often the ancestors didn't, to to alchemize that wounding and turn it into empowerment and liberation and knowing that that liberation both helps and affects those that have come before us and will absolutely impact those that come after us and that that is our responsibility and our duty if we have awareness to not maintain a loyalty to fear, to not maintain a loyalty to the trauma and to the assumptions we made as a result of the traumas we've experienced and as a result of what our ancestors have gone through, to come back to the awareness that is not limited by conditions or conditional reality. And following on from this, this desire to become sovereign, this desire to really take responsibility of the reality that we're creating and what we're vibrating into the unified field, it's really being reflected to us through figures like Trump, who are being hailed as saviors by a lot of people in America and by a lot of people in the freedom movement in general, and to recognize that no matter the figurehead, no matter the godhead, no matter how compelling that figure may be, we are sovereign and we are being asked to mature out of these codependent enmeshed dynamics and ways of relating to others that position other beings above ourselves to move beyond the ways of perceiving others above or below ourselves to really move out of these very imbalanced power dynamics in relationships that often will elevate people in terms of their presence or their power above our own in terms of their influence and their worth above our own this often happens you know, in spiritual groups with gurus or teachers. It happens in politics with politicians. It happens with historical figures and spiritual figures like Yeshua, where a lack of spiritual maturity makes the assumption that the person embodying favorable qualities is more powerful, has an innate power and worth that is above 
their own, and that is false. This is a point of spiritual maturity where our discernment is really needed now. Can you recognize that there is no savior coming, whether it's in politics or spirituality? Can we recognize that there is no savior coming because there is no savior needed? Whether it's in politics or in your spiritual work, there is no need for a savior. There is no need for a rescuer because that architecture of the savior of the rescuer is still in duality. Can we recognize that if there is a rescuer, there is always someone that needs to be rescued? That if there is a savior, there is someone that needs to be saved? That is still in the templating of duality. We're moving back to the singularity now. The singularity, the one, the union with God. This is the collapsing of these binary ways. And so the invitation right now is not to elevate anything or anyone in any field above ourselves, to recognize that we are all as one in the eyes of God. We are all equal. We were all born equal, born worthy, born valuable, and all born with that spark of creation within us as both children of God and creators on behalf of God, all carrying the God seed, all carrying the God spark, all expressions of the one. That's not to say that we can't respect people. It's not to say that we can't honor people. It's not to say that we can't have a deep reverence for the work that people are doing on the planet. There are so many brilliant people doing incredibly pioneering things on the earth right now, but it's just to notice, are we assigning power to that person that we both believe we don't have? Are we assigning value to that person that we believe we don't have? Are we assigning worth to that person that we believe we don't have? If we are, it's a mirror for us to start doing more integration work. This is the opportunity right now. This is how we start to slowly come back into a place of sovereignty, to start calling our power back, to start becoming more coherent with our consciousness. This is a time of great refinement, as I've said, and these big reflections we're having on the main stage, on the global stage, these are all reflections for us to just notice, where do I give power away still? Where do I leak energy? Who do I leak energy to? What do I believe about them? to be true that I don't believe is true for myself? Where do I need to be in a more neutral and loving state with myself and in, but embodied in my true nature? Where do I need to move out of judgment, out of kind of mental awareness or emotional awareness and back into my pure beingness and presence so that I can neutralize those assumptions, those beliefs, those stories, those reactive ways. So as I said at the beginning of this video, a time of great empowerment is upon us, huge energetic opportunities, often you know, reflected to us through challenge. I'm not suggesting that we bypass the challenge aspect and we deny the parts of us that grieve, that are in states of anger and frustration, that are irritated by the conditions, saddened by the conditions we experience. It's a paradoxical thing being human to both honor the human experience and the waves that we move through experiencing a conditional reality and to also hold the vibratory awareness that knows we are not truly affected by this conditional reality, that the truth of who we are is not impacted or affected by the conditions that we experience and that that aspect of us, our true nature, has the ability to hold conditional reality with loving awareness. The singularity holding the duality with love. So I hope this has been a helpful video for you today. If you've been feeling into any of these themes, I'd love to hear what's coming up for you. As always, if you're not already subscribed and you enjoyed this content, I invite you to like and subscribe. And if you thought this was helpful and you feel there's someone that might resonate with it, I invite you to share. It really helps my content reach the right people. Thanks for being here with me and I look forward to connecting with you again in the next video.